Okay, so one of alcohol's, you know, specific drug actions is as an antagonist at the glutamate NMDA receptor. Alcohol is an antagonist at GLU-NMDA. Um, and, you know, glutamate, recall, is um, our uh, brain's primary excitatory neurotransmitter, which means that most excitatory synapses where you're going to get, you know, depolarization of the next neuron and, you know, uh, uh, excitation towards, you know, the threshold potential, the depolarized potential of minus 55 for the initiation of an action potential, you know, you're going to have glutamate being released you know, presynaptically. So here's a glutamatergic neuron, right? Here is glutamate being released when it's stimulated right upon the arrival of an action potential here. Here's the postsynaptic neuron, right? And, you know, glutamate's going to bind to a series of ionotropic receptors that are located postsynaptically across the synapse, uh, which will swing open channels, right, pores that will allow for, you know, uh, depolarization uh, of this, you know, postsynaptic cell, which means it's going to open holes to, again, sodium or, you know, calcium or something that's going to enter, you know, something positive that'll enter from the outside, you know, and go from minus 65 and take it down towards the threshold potential to get this neuron to fire. Well, glutamate has a number of postsynaptic, um, you know, ionotropic, you know, receptor targets, including AMPA, you know, receptors, AMPA glutamate receptors and kinate glutamate receptors, which actually handle most of the, you know, standard excitatory neurotransmission at these glutamatergic synapses because they, you know, they bind glutamate, swing open holes that let sodium go through and that depolarizes to, you know, get the threshold at the axon hillock and initiate uh, an action potential. Um, however, under conditions of high, you know, glutamate stimulation. So there's a lot of glutamate being released into the cleft. Remember, sometimes there's more than one glutamatergic, you know, neuron, you know, uh, sending its presynaptic membrane in here around a synapse. So maybe if they both fire together, that's sort of the coincidence of them both firing, you're going to get greater stimulation on these AMPA and kinate receptors, more depolarization. And at those heightened levels of glutamate stimulation, you actually cause another kind of glutamate, uh, you know, receptor, the NMDA receptor, to change its shape, to swing open a channel, to eject a magnesium ion that's stuck in the pore of its, you know, channel um, that will, under those high stimulation conditions, allow for both sodium and also calcium to enter this postsynaptic cell. And remember, calcium, you know, just even a small amount of calcium can initiate you know, a, a biochemical cascade, you know, within this neuron, this postsynaptic cell, because calcium is, you know, not found free very much inside these neurons. It, it's highly, you know, there are chemicals that react with it right away. So, you know, high stimulation, you know, presynaptically, you know, on this postsynaptic, you know, membrane, lots of amp and kinate receptors responding, lots of sodium coming in, much greater levels of depolarization. Well, then the NMDA receptor ejects that magnesium ion and then calcium comes in. And then the calcium binds to something, right? And that's the first messenger inside the cell now. And then that'll, you know, interact with something else and change it. That's the second messenger. And you've got this biochemical cascade that's been initiated by the high levels of activity and the activation of these glutamate NMDA, you know, receptors. Um, and some of these downstream activated chemicals, activated messenger chemicals, will enter the nucleus in the middle of the cell, bind, you know, to the, uh, the, the chromosomes, and, you know, upregulate or downregulate, alter, you know, the expression, and physically change the nature of this synapse, of this postsynaptic membrane here, so that it responds more vigorously uh, to future... Um, you know, stimulation. So it, it actually what strengthens the synapse. You know, the, the scientists will use the term, it'll potentiate, you know, the synapse. That means, you know, to, to strengthen it. Uh, and it can last because you physically altered the structure of this connection, of this network connection. So they call this a long-term potentiation or LTP. And it's very important to learning uh, and memory. So alcohol antagonizes that glutamate NMDA receptor. So you may be having experiences under the consumption of too much alcohol uh, where, you know, you're getting a lot of activity on, you know, new, you know, different synaptic connections, different excitatory glutamatergic connections, which would normally potentially strengthen and 
form the basis to some extent for you know the new flow of information uh, along you know altered networks that reflect your learning and memory uh, and if glutamate or sorry if alcohol is going to block that receptor from responding at that high level of stimulation you're not going to get these you know physical changes in synapses as a result of experience so uh you know uh, alcohol is an antagonist of this glutamate nmda receptor that's so important for learning and memory um, and so people who consume you know a lot of alcohol can have you know blackouts they can actually have periods where they don't remember anything uh, because even though lots of stuff happened and there was you know huge increases in excitatory neurotransmission at, you know, along specific networks in the brain well their nmda receptors uh, that would normally link that to changes in gene expression and potentiation or strengthening of specific connections uh, are are blocked right these nmda receptors are blocked and antagonized you know by the presence of